Hello everyone, welcome back to the channel and this video is about advanced NTFS permissions. And since I've already covered the basics of share versus NTFS permissions in a previous video, we will discuss more advanced concepts in this video like inheritance for file and folder permissions. So in this video, I will be discussing effective file permissions including inheritance and we will also have real workplace scenarios and home lab videos that you can follow along if you are interested. So if you are interested in today's video, please keep on watching and without further ado, let's get started. Okay, so in this part of the video, I'll be explaining effective permissions and inheritance. But if you already know this concept, you can skip this part and proceed to the hands-on section. What are effective permissions? Effective permissions refer to the actual set of permissions a user or group has on a file or folder. These permissions come from multiple sources, such as explicit permissions, which are assigned directly to a user or group, inherited permissions, which are passed down from parent folders, group memberships, where a user is part of a group with permissions, or deny permissions, which overrides allow permissions. Windows uses NTFS permissions, which allow child folders and files to inherit permissions from their parent folder unless explicitly modified. So, for example, if a user has access to a parent folder, they may automatically have access to all subfolders and files. In NTFS permissions, you can allow or deny access to files and folders. Explicit deny is when you manually set a deny permission for a user or group and it overrides any inherited or allowed permissions the user might have. For example, all employees have access to a shared project files folder. However, a specific folder called Confidential contains sensitive financial data that should not be accessed by John, a member of the employee's group. John is a part of the employee's group, meaning he can access everything inside the folder. You need to block John from opening or reading Confidential without affecting other employees' access. This is where explicit deny comes in place. You can also break inheritance by disabling permission inheritance and setting new permissions manually. Here's a real-world application example. An HR department has a payroll folder that should only be accessible to payroll managers. However, an IT admin notices that all HR employees have access due to inherited permissions from the HR folder. So the solution for this is to disable inheritance for the payroll folder and manually assign NTFS permissions to restrict access to just the payroll manager and not the entire HR team. Okay, so before we get started with the home lab activities, here are the prerequisites. First, you need to have Windows Server installed on a virtual machine. It can be Server 2022 or 25. Then you need a Windows 11 client, VM, or a machine to test access from a non-server system. Because Windows 10 is approaching its end of life soon, I will be showing all the home lab activities on Windows 11. And of course, you need to have Active Directory tools installed on your Windows server. So to apply the concepts of effective permission and inheritance, here are some scenarios that we can practice on our home lab. So for the first scenario, there is a common folder that has full control to everyone in the network. The common subfolders has inherited full control permissions. The project group needs access to only one subfolder called project. What you can do is to apply NTFS on the subfolder to restrict access to the project group. First, you have to disable inheritance from the project subfolder. Then, remove the everyone permissions. So the project folder won't have full control permissions and give a modify or full control permissions to project group for project subfolder. Okay, so for our hands-on activities, we are going to replicate all of the scenarios in this video so we can get our practice for effective permissions and inheritance. 
Okay, so let's get started with the first scenario. We are gonna do everything from scratch, so make sure that you have your Windows Server installed with the Active Directory users and computer in here. So we can create a project group first in AD users and computers. You can do this on whatever OU that you want. I'm just going to put it under the users OU in here. So let's just right click and then select new, select group, and then let's just type in project in here and select it as security with a global scope. Okay, now we have the project group. Now let's create our folder and subfolders. Okay, so let's go to our file explorer in here and I'm just select the local disk in here. Under this folder, we can create our shared folders and we are gonna follow what the scenario has given us. So let's create a new folder called common. Okay, so inside the common, there's two subfolders called project and events. So let's create those folders too. Okay, so let's now give permissions to the common folder in here. Let's right click on the folder, click on properties and go to the sharing tab first. This is a share permission. So let's click on share and then let's add everyone in here. Okay, everyone should have access to this folder from the scenario. Let's click on advanced sharing and let's go to permissions here and everyone should have permissions in this and then let's go to the security tab, select everyone and make sure that everyone should have full control in this folder. So let's edit this permission and select full control. Click on apply and okay. So let's close this and let's see the properties again. So when you click on share in here, it has read or write for everyone and when you go to the security tab in here everyone should have full control in this folder okay so let's see if these permissions has passed on to its subfolder so if we open common in here let's just ch check the events folder and see if it has the same permissions as its parent folder so let's right click on it and click on properties Let's see sharing first and click on the share. Okay, as you can see in here, we don't have to add everyone. It's just added in here because it inherited the permissions. And let's check on the security tab here. And this applies as well to this subfolder events. Full control is given to this automatically without having to add it manually. So same with the project, it should have the same permissions as its parent folder. So we can see that inheritance is working in here. So let's do another test. If you were to add more subfolders other these subfolders like project. So let's create a folder for example. And then let's just call it contracts. Okay, let's go back and let's see the permissions. In here, let's click on properties and click on sharing, share, and so you can see everyone permission is already applied when you create new subfolders because inheritance is enabled by default in Windows file systems. So everyone also has full control in here. Okay, let's go back to our scenario since we've created all of the folders. So what we want is for the common folder to have full control for everyone, but the subfolder project should only be accessed by the project group, which has the modify or full control. So the other subfolder should have the same permission as its parent folder, but not for the project folder. And the project group should be the only ones to have access for that and not everyone. Okay, so the first step for this is to disable inheritance. So if we click on, right click on project and select properties, go to the security tab and click on advanced at the bottom, you will see that there's a button called disable inheritance in here because by default, all the folders have inheritance enabled. So first is click on disable inheritance in here. 
okay so it will ask you if you want to convert it or remove all inherited permissions so there's a difference between these two the convert inherited permissions takes all currently inherited permissions and makes them explicit permissions on the object so for example if you want to keep the current permissions like the everyone full control but stop feature inheritance from the parent folder or object this is what you will choose and then for remove all inherited permissions from this object this completely removes all inherited permissions and you will use this if you want full control and don't want the object to have any permissions from the parent and if you want to start with a clean slate so for example, if we select remove all inherited permissions from this object, it will lose all of the inherited access from our common folder earlier. But if we select the convert inherited permissions, it will still keep the everyone full control permissions, but it will not get the future in permissions that will be set for common if there's more permissions that will add it from the parent folder. Okay, so for example, let's remove this just to see what happens. So everything will be gone from this permissions and you'll be adding all the permissions manually because it is now starting from clean slate. So let's just cancel on this. We don't want to do that. So let's go back to advanced and disable inheritance in here. So let's just do a convert inherited permissions because I really don't want to remove the admin access in here. Just the everyone. So let's select this. And the next step would be to remove everyone because that's the only access that we want to change. So click on remove in here and then let's click on apply and OK. So if you check, everyone should be gone from the groups that has the permissions in here. And then let's click on advanced because we are going to add the project group this time because we only want them to have access. So let's select and click add in here and click on select the principal and let's type in the group name project and then click on OK and this is where you will give them what kind of uh, permissions let's give them full control in here and just click on OK and as you can see project group was added in here click on apply and OK and you can also check down here the project was already added and then so you can see the permissions in here have the full control so that's what we want for the project subfolder in here okay for the next scenario let's practice implementing explicit deny in ncfs permissions here's the scenario you are an it administrator at a company where all employees have access to a shared project folder however the confidential folder contains sensitive financial data that should not be accessed by John, a member of the employees group. The project folder has read and write permissions for all employees. And you need to block John from opening or reading confidential folder without affecting other employees' access. Okay, let's do our lab now and we can get started by creating the folders. So let's create the project folder first and the subfolders confidential and materials okay i'm also going to create the user john and active directory users and computer you can use any user that you want if you already have other users but for the sake of consistency i'm just going to create john in here okay i'm just going to create it under users just right click click on new user and then john last name doe and i'm just going to give it a logon name john click on next and then just type any password okay just uncheck this for now and then finish now we have a john user in here okay next make sure that the project folder has the correct permission so based on the scenario it should have read and write for everyone so let's just right click on this click on properties go to sharing and share the folder and select everyone and then add and make sure that 
they have read and write in here and then click on share and done so if you look at advanced sharing in here and permissions you would see everyone has these types of permissions and let's just check if those permissions were inherited on the subfolders so let's click on the confidential and select properties go to sharing click on share and so you can see everyone has read and write permissions here okay the next step we want to do is to explicitly deny john on this confidential folder so what we're going to do is to right click on this folder and then click on properties let's go to security tab in here and then let's click on edit in here because we want to add john so let's click on the add for uh, button in here and type john and okay and then john is added in here so we can set an explicit deny for this user so as you can see in here there's two types of permissions there's an allow and deny so if you want to explicitly deny to a group or a user you can do it in here and then just select uh, deny just check uh, the deny read in here because that's what we need to follow based on the scenario so if you click on apply it's just going to give you a warning that the deny entries takes precedence over allow entries okay this means that if a user is a member of two groups, one that is allowed a permission and another that is denied the same permission, the user is denied that permission. Okay, so do you want to continue? Let's click yes. And then if we check on the other permissions in here, everyone should still have the allow permissions. So they are not affected with what we gave John as John for uh, explicit deny in here. So it's just john that will be denied permissions for this folder everyone should still have the same permissions and if we check on the materials this shouldn't be affected by what we did with the other folder so let's just check so everyone still has the full control in here but confidential has an explicit deny permission for john though so that is what you do if you need to explicitly deny a permission for a person or a group so for the next scenario this is going to be a challenge if you want to do this home lab activity i'm not going to show you how this will be done you need to figure it out on your own if you want to do this of course if you have any questions or clarifications about this scenario you can leave it in the comment section down below and i will answer those questions so here's the scenario the HR department needs a shared folder where only HR staff can access confidential documents. The HR users have full control over the folder, permissions inherited down to subfolders and files, and non-HR users cannot access it, even if they have the access to the parent folder. So that would be it for today's video. I hope you learned more about the advanced file permissions and inheritance. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave a comment down below. And I hope to see you guys in the next one. Thank you so much for watching.